Send me a DM, fam. Carmen, what's up with you? Hey, hey, hey. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I yeah. just got off the live. I did a whole uh, 30 minutes. I was feeling a little good. And I'm like, oh, here goes Will. He's about to be on here for 120. <laughs> I, I don't know a lot of people that could go on live every day for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> what's up, Joe? No. Uh, not too much. I just jumped off live, my live, and then I came and I saw you started a live, so I jumped on here. Just what'd you, what'd you, huh? What you talk about today? Today on my live, well, today's Tax Pro Thursdays, so we talked about building your tax business and what tax pros should be doing now to help them build uh, to make sure that they have a lucrative tax upcoming tax season. Definitely, y'all. So y'all make sure y'all reach out to my good friend, one of my best friends in the whole wide world, Carmen Mohan, CEO <laughs> owner of Straight Tap. So Carmen, I wanted you to hop on here because yesterday our convo really hit me. And it's interesting because I had another conversation with a good friend of mine later that evening. And one of the things that we talked about is that, and a lot of people really don't know your full story like I do. And, you know, and you've been, you, you, you've, you, you're the epitome of getting it out the mud. You know, I think people see you online all pretty and dialed up and, but they don't know the journey that you actually went through. And I want to give you your flowers here today. I want to brag about my friend. And like a lot of people don't know, like Carmen, and, 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 and she'll echo this. She was six figures in a hole with her business. And for her to come out, didn't ask anybody for no handouts, didn't uh, uh, do no GoFundMes. She didn't go tag team with a bunch of people trying to blow her brand up. And she reached out to me. We can't, <laughs> what'd you say? No clout chasing over here. No clout chasing, none of that. And she reached out to me yesterday. You mind if I share what we talked about yesterday? Ah, <sighs> uh, what part? Ah. <laughs> uh, I say we gotta let people know. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm like turning red. <laughs> It'll All right, be go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, I, I just, this is not on mine anyway. It's on yours. Okay. This is this is all me. So y'all can get on me for this for me bragging about Carmen. So knowing what she had been through, I mean, she's had business partners run off with money. She's had people take advantage of her kindness. Carmen will literally give you her last dime, but then she will still find <laughs> still find it uh, in, in her in herself to go invest to become better, even though she gave somebody her last. How much right, detail are you about to go right now? <laughs> to all right, go ahead, all right, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> but just knowing all of that about Carmen, and then yesterday she hit me. And she was excited. And, you know, she uh, just recently was able to, to, to purchase a vehicle through her business. And then she made another investment in another business that's going to be an opportunity for her to make uh, additional passive income. And she reached out. And I'm like, yo, you just spent a hundred in a day. <laughs> no, I didn't. I'm broke. <laughs> Look. I am see, broke. My, my, my friend. But the reason I, I, I'm bragging on you, Carmen, is because it's a lot of people who will never even get an opportunity to see that type of money. And seeing where you came from, you never gave up on yourself. You always, you know, uh, was positive. You always giving good energy. And you're always looking to ways to provide value. Like, even with, with you and I relationship, like, I can do something for you and and you know me, I'm not going to ask you for anything, but you'll be like, look, you would just randomly send me a check and be like, yeah, here, go, you know what I'm saying? And so like, you just don't meet a lot of people like that. And I, I always want to be able to, 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 you know, promote and, and support and cheerlead people who, who are just cut from a different cloth. Because like you said, you've never clout chased and you're, you've always remained no humble. No clout chasing around here. <laughs> I want to brag. Only that, I feel like with us, we are cut from a different cloth in the in the form of we have 
both different companies, different industries, but there's so many people that just want to get close to you to know what you know and run off with it. They just right. want to duplicate what you do, you know, instead of leveraging your resources and who you have around you and learning how to provide value, they just want to take what you got and keep it checking. And there's not a lot of people that have the type of loyalty that we have. Like one thing about me, I'm a Leo. Leos are loyal to the T. There's not going to be anyone that's ever going to be able to come to me with services that Will offers. Like, no, even if, even though Will's <laughs> pricier than, you know, 80% of these guys, at the end of the day, our services, what, what we work out, what we build, what I said three years ago still will stand true today, right? The amount of, of loyalty, the amount of making sure that we constantly feed back into each other's businesses like you don't find a lot of individuals like that nowadays right um and i think that that's always been a great dynamic when when even building your business relationships and you have a lot of amazing business relationships well you know watching your relationships over the years you know and some you were loyal you know you were helping i don't i don't know how much you want me to share now <laughs> okay oh, yeah. Since sure. we share uncomfortable shit about each other, <laughs> um, you know, you were, you were helping people pay their bills. You were lifting people's whole companies up to that seven, eight figure mark. And, and, and you were still so loyal about it that no one could make you switch teams. Like no one. And you did that and you did that for so long. And then you still at the end got the shit end of the stick. And it was like, yo, and when I, when, when we and you talked about it and you're like, you know, I'm cool with it. I'm like, what? <laughs> you're cool. What? How are you cool with it? How are you cool with this? This, this, this doesn't make any sense. And you are just such a stand up individual. You're like, you know what? I'm going to do what I need to do decision wise. But at the end of the day, you pulled out with grace and you could have went ham. <laughs> when I say me, no one, no one, I know, know what happened could have went completely ham but you didn't do that because just the type of stand-up individual you are like you chose to move out and bow out with grace and you were loyal until your loyalty just it, it just couldn't go no more it's like all right I, there's only so many times i can get screwed over um and, and i like that about about you know you i think you're a really stand-up they don't make a lot of stand-up people now now everyone is cloud chasing everyone want to be on the next wave everyone want to get on the next big thing people want to be around to use other people right um you know people want to be around to to learn from you take your ideas and try to duplicate it when they don't even realize just because we make this shit look easy don't mean it's easy you know, we put in time, energy, 12, 14, 16, 18 hour days, four years, right? To get to where we are. So now we may have a six hour day now. We may have a little bit less schedule. We may be able to move on our own time and do whatever we want to do. But we have not gotten to the place. But but and we have gotten to the place to make it look easy. This shit ain't easy, though. No, it's, it's not. But like I say, no matter what journey you take in life, all that shit gonna be hard. And I'd rather be hard knowing my bills are paid. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so I, I, I'm just always appreciative of the journey, which is actually something I'm gonna talk about today. But, you know, uh, but yeah, like I said, our convo really sat with me all night. I couldn't even sleep. One, really? because, no, I couldn't because I was just happy for you knowing like what you had come out of and just continually building and 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 never really letting the people see you sweat you know despite you know whatever people may have had their own preconceived notion and another thing too like it's not a lot of women entrepreneurs that i've been around that you know is like yo i'm gonna do this on my own now i'm not saying that there's not i can only speak for the people that i've been around but no you've always just done your thing and that's why i continue to show a lot of the queens who do have businesses, like somebody hit me the other day, it was like, yo, you promote a lot of queens. And I'm like, yeah, because it's not a lot of kings that do. Because I do believe ego comes into play because I think naturally women make better entrepreneurs than men because of the level of organization. And But that's why when you build with the right people, you have the right resources, like all of that, all of that plays a role. And so I'm even just appreciative 
not just for our personal friendship, but even business wise, because we're always, uh, uh, you know, um, consuming with each other in, 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 in the level of exchange when it comes to business or even just personal growth. So yeah, yeah. I, I got your flowers today. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And I, I was I was thinking about it last night. I didn't feel what you felt. But uh, I remember being negative $100,000 and calling Will like, and Will asked me and I don't know if you remember this part, but he was so used to people asking him to borrow money at the time that he asked me like, do you need to hold something? And me just being the type of person I am, I'm like, no, I don't. I'm not asking you to borrow money. I, I'm trying to get some funding. And he's like, oh, okay. Like he didn't know where I was going with that conversation. And um, I will never forget, like it was yesterday. Like it, we were down to like probably like our last 10 grand. And when your payroll is five grand every, you know, bi-weekly that, you know, there's only so many months you can get through. And then plus our rent and plus all these things. And I just remember thinking like, damn, how am I going to pay all of our expenses next month? And just being stressed out and, um, thinking like, damn, I changed my life. I don't want to go back to hustling. <laughs> and what am I going to do? And Will was just like, nah, you know, you can do this, this, and this, and this. Gave me a plan. We got the plan. Got the business credit. Um, I thank God had my personal credit already positioned myself. Um, and then we, he went ahead, helped me get some funding, and wired it right to my account within like 48 hours. Everything was done like one, two, three. And why I respect you as a professional outside of our personal friendship as a professional is you always do what you say you're going to do. Your follow-up game, what the things you say you can close, the deals you say you have, everything always checks out with you. And I was having a conversation the other day about this new business relationship I have with this, this queen. And I want to work with her so bad because I love her numbers and we've already sent her like nine leads in the last couple weeks and she is terrible with answering her phone doesn't answer her phone she wants to text message the deals i'm just like this doesn't make sense and she, and it's, it's hard for myself and i also she got because she has access to me she got access to other people that are sending her leads now and she just won't her follow-up her follow-through have a good night her follow-up her follow-through um, it's just terrible. Her customer service, customer support. If you're, if I'm doing business with you and I can't get you on the phone, that's a problem. You know, how, do, how do you expect people that do real business like us, me, my colleagues, my friends, how do you expect us to take you seriously? And one thing about Will is that he will always, even if it's 12 o'clock midnight, he will get back to you. He will always actually see it all the way through. And a lot of people can learn from you in that aspect. Um, because you practice what you preach in your business principles and you built a model that on the back end customer support is on the top front front line of everything that you do you know you make sure when your automatic course automatic email response comes at 24 to 48 hours somebody's getting back to them in less than 24 hours right. and a lot of those practices a lot of us right as minority first generation business owners we don't practice a lot of those principles you know um we have we, we want to build now the new thing is build a business that's on your time build your i don't believe any of that like you're i believe in the our old school tactics right the customer comes first being accessible retaining our clients being fully um uh being fully present reachable you know, if, if, if I have to jump through hoops and hurdles to get to you, by the time I Google someone else's number and call them, I can I can I can work on another business in less than five minutes. Yeah, but, no. Yeah. I agree. And, and and yeah, and we're gonna definitely keep this dialogue going because I think a lot of people who wanna get into entrepreneurship, the, this type of dialogue is healthy for them because a lot of times, you know, you go into business, you start making money, you really don't know how to run a business. You can make money without knowing what to do. We've all have been there and we've had to slow down to start learning how down to sustain. Like anybody can make a, a hundred thousand. Anybody can make a quarter of a million, but then can you sustain it? And that's why uh, I, I, I really put a lot of money back into my back end to ensure we have systems in place. Like, uh, my, uh, like uh, Ashley was saying yesterday, she sacrifices Lamborghinis and Chanel to really have a real future. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm really focused on building equity into my company. I tell you all the time, I'm selling mine for 50 million. <laughs> but every dollar we spend out of our company to create a lifestyle, you're pulling equity out of your business. So now it becomes less valuable. I want the exit. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to be doing this forever. I want to be able to have a sell my entire portfolio. I could even sell a, por a, a portion of my portfolio of businesses that I own and still get 20 million. But nobody's having that dialogue. Everybody's like, hey, let me go get the nice car, the outfits, and some jewelry and look like I'm winning. That's how you that's that's how you end up in in, in I don't that's even know what a Chanel bag feel like. <laughs> you know, I don't I don't even own a roll. I want a rolly so bad. So bad. When I tell you so bad, I want a Rolex, I want a, a nice watch so bad. I don't even own a Rolex. There's right. a lot of things that I don't own or purchase, but I'm pouring back in. I mean, you said it a little while ago, I, but not that I can't walk into Chanel store and buy a Chanel bag. Right. Uh, but I'm just choosing to reinvest into they know my company. Hunted yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I spent what? No. Spent a hundred in one day. I, I reinvested a hundred thousand. <laughs> it's not um, better. Spent. Remember that. Yeah. Internet, you gotta make it. You gotta put a spin on it. <laughs> look, look, look at me. I'm right. <laughs> uh, right. uh, yes, I did and and to come from a place of being negative $100,000 to be able to spend that in you know 24 hours and I purchased a trucking company and two trucks and um, I wasn't going to share this which I'm not on my page at least not my stuff and to come from a place you know to even make the moves that I made this week is like it was a little overwhelming um, and even a little scary, right? Because when you've done so many negative, when when you when you have so much business investments that went bad, or bad people around you, you know, it it, it kind of could tarnish your confidence and ability to reinvest into yourself. Granted, when I made these business bad business investments, it was you know I was in my twenties still, so it was a long time ago, years ago. Now that I'm in my thirties, I've grown and blossoms to this amazing business woman. But even myself, I'm like, eh, do I wanna? Uh. <laughs> I said, Carmen, breathe. <laughs> breathe, that's all you gotta do. <laughs> yeah, but I'm excited. I'm excited. Will put me onto one of his friends and I'm excited. I'm excited to build something new. Um, I'm excited for the breath of fresh air. And I love my business. I love my businesses, right? I have, also have a tech, uh, tax software company. Um, so we own. I own a tax and accounting firm based out of uh, Long Island, New York, and we service all 50 states. We're also a small business advisory. So now our focus is small business and helping them build their businesses. Um, and so that's my main business and my main passion. We also sell tax software for tax professionals looking to get started. So that's always been my side business. Um, but a lot of my industry is a lot of hands-on work. And I've done a lot of the hands-on work. Now I'm just looking for some more passive investments. And that's what I'm working on um, and building my real estate portfolio. All right. So Go. a lot of the software, Carmen has been one of the, the, the innovators in that space. A lot of people are not going to give her her credit, but I want y'all to know because there's a lot of people in the tax space who still operating off of old mental technology, software technology, and Carmen is always reinvesting and she one of the pioneers in that space when it comes to this digital space of, of software and tax preparation and tax strategy and bookkeeping and uh, business consulting, all of that. So uh, we appreciate what you to the table, Carmen. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we spent over $30,000 in our back system, back end systems, innovating. We have a full online portal that is 100% secure with 256 bit encryption secure, which is bank level for those of, for the, those that don't understand the tech bank level security. People can upload their documents fraud proof. Um, we also have a whole system that will guide you from A to Z on where you are in your status with us, a full portal. Um, that you can control all, all of your things, go in there, and you basically have your own library of docs and everything that you can do. Um, yeah, we have a lot. 
Yeah. And one last I got to say, I, I have to say this. Okay. okay. I, I remember when, you know, we would talk and we'll, you know, it'll start going and we'll start talking about business. And then when I start giving you advice, and even though we had a friendship, you were like, Will, can I just pay you to be my coach? And I just thought about that as we were talking. And it just meant a lot, even though, you know, just the fact that you respected me that much, even outside of our personal friendship, that you were still willing to invest, even though I didn't mind pouring that information into you. So, uh, so no, nah, it's just a lot. And when you talked about that loyalty factor, it's like we've never had an issue when it came to a client, when it came to money, when it like any of that stuff. And so I say all of that to say they definitely don't make them like that often. And so, you know, I need y'all to go follow Carmen Mohan. Um, you know, I know people is looking to make some extra money. We don't know what's about to happen with everybody scrambling with the economy. But when you create your own universe, the economy doesn't play that big of a role because you still got to file your taxes no matter what. So make sure y'all reach out to Carmen Mohan. Go follow her. She's a wealth yeah. of space. And, uh, and this is where I send a lot of my business, a lot of my clients. So make sure y'all go follow her. And, uh, and she'll hit you back. If and she don't, our industry is booming right now. Where most companies, the tax and the financial service industry, where most companies are going like this on a downhill and losing sales, ours are going on an uphill. And the reason being is that there's so many new tax law changes and so many different scenario changes that we need to keep up with and people need the guidance. Look, they just released guidance that starting January 2022, anyone who receives more than $600 on Cash App, Zelle, PayPal, Venmo, whatever it is, they have to now get 1099 for it. So things like that with the new tax law, uh, being in the financial industry, starting a tax business, starting a tax office, or even educating yourself for yourself and your peers is more important now than ever. And our industry is going, there's going to be a bigger need. The IRS is currently right now building out a whole department for small business audits. They want to audit all these businesses because they know that for a long time, people were getting away with paying minimal taxes, right? Now, with all this SBA and PPP money and EIDL money and all this money that got flushed back into businesses, they know even more now than ever, there's going to be a lot of people that got that forgiven, got that revenue forgiven, and haven't claimed it now on their taxes, so now you're double dipping. You're expensing it off of your, your gross revenue, and then you got it forgiven. So the bank, the IRS right now is literally, as we speak, building out their departments to increase audits up to 30%. And the reason they're doing that is to come out after small business owners. And it's not a coincidence that now there's a lot more minority small business owners, and they also want to do that as well. So they are coming. So for those of you that are have been thinking about possibly getting into the tax and accounting field, now is the time because there's a lot of changes to come and our industry is only going to get more powerful, but you have to grow with the times. Definitely. All right, Carmen, well, I'll let you go. Cause I know you probably got some things to do. Go ride around in that new whip. Owned by <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. If those of you want right. to check out straight tax, contact us. Definitely. Appreciate you, Carmen. Thank you. Y'all make sure y'all go follow my friend, Carmen Mohan. So I want to hop on here today, and that was completely impromptu. I saw her hop on, and I just had to reach out to her, like I said, and give her her flowers because she's been grinding for a long time. And so um, I want to come on here and just really talk about just, you know, from that dialogue her and I had, and then I had another dialogue with uh, my good friend last night, Derek Harper, and we were just talking about just value and you know, he made a comment to me. And for those who are on my page and follow me, I actually just put a post up. And he said, well, you've been humble for a long time. And I had to really think about that. And he was like, like, humble can only get you so far. And then I got to thinking, I was like, yeah, I, it's, I'll, I'll always have a humble spirit. But I think a lot of times, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys go through this, but we have to stop dimming our light to pacify other people and making them feel bad about the decisions or lack of decisions they didn't make in their life. And I can remember, and it's crazy, like I could be around my friends or family who may not be in the best financial situation, 
And it's like I'm embarrassed to say I, I've my businesses have done millions of dollars in revenue in 12 months. It's like I'm ashamed to tell people I own all my vehicles. It's like I'm ashamed. Like, why should we be ashamed? Like, it's nothing wrong with having a humble spirit, but you don't have to remain humble for people. God bless you, blesses you with those things for you to be an inspiration to other people to know that it's attainable for them. You know, like if you would have told me 10 years ago, 15 years ago, that I would come from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where I was told that by the age of 21, I'd be dead or in jail, a college dropout, didn't have any real skills. You know, I have been fired from multiple jobs. I've been laid off. I've been homeless. I've had to move back in with my parents at the age of 24. That I would be in a position where I am today, where I've helped a lot of people make millions of dollars. I'm going to say that again. I've helped a lot of people make millions of dollars. And I don't go online clout chasing, asking them to give me kudos or pay homage because I don't care about that stuff. You know, the reason I, I, I don't uh, need the kudos or validation or things like that, one, because I don't care about stuff, meaning like I don't need the big shiny things to impress people because I was validated from birth, as we all have been. And that's that's really the mindset that I've been on. But at the same time, I think we all get to a point where we got to start letting people know that. A lot of people wouldn't be in position if it wasn't for me. A lot of people wouldn't be in position uh, or doing the things they were doing if it wasn't for the sacrifices that I made. A lot of people wouldn't have the platforms they have if I hadn't uh, 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 taken the sacrifice of not working for money for so many years. You know, when, when, when people would ask me to come fly out and speak at the events, I didn't charge them. I wasn't trying to sell my services. I always pointed it back to whoever the expert was who invited me. And for those who have been to any of my events, I've never went and tried to sell myself. I let I put the information out there and let you and let the people make the educated decisions for themselves. And so because it, as I often say, I don't do shit for money. It doesn't mean nothing to me. One of my mentors once told me you know, and he said that, you know, people often ask him, man, why you don't have a big house and this and that and that and that? He said, because I live in my head. I don't need those things to impress people who will never achieve what I have any, what I, what I, what I would have anyway. I don't need those things to impress people who probably don't even like me. And I remember he told me this years ago, and that always stuck with me that, you know, now don't get me wrong. I like nice shit. <laughs> for those who've been out with me, who hung out with me, they know. And when people come out with me and when I take people to hang with me, I'm very giving and making sure that you're going to always have a good time as long as we're hanging out. But again, I'm not I'm not caught up in stuff where I feel I have to be the dance and bear forever just to keep up a lifestyle to uh, uh, of, 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 a, of a of a mirage or this picture to paint to impress other people. And so that's one of the reasons why I do what I do. And again, people look at it as me being humble. It's, that, it's just that I value what I bring to the marketplace and, and that's my way of giving back. And so in, 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 in talking about that, you know, I often talk about, you know, a lot of times people get stuck in their situation and the reason that I think so, and again, this is only based off of my reference point, is I really do believe that people love being stuck in misery. People like to be stuck in misery. I'll give you an example. When, people, when, when some people go to the hospital, why do we have to show the world that we're in a hospital? Now, no knock to anybody who does that. And I get that we want people to pray for us. But I wouldn't want people to have that much information or data on me of something that I'm going through intimately. But we do that because we want the oohs and the ahs. We do that because we want people to feel sorry for us. And so we can even take this on the flip side. When we go and, you know, we get 
uh, uh, advice from people and when we seek uh, uh, counsel from people, you know, or we'll go and ask them, we'll go and ask someone, hey, what do you think about me joining this program that's going to teach me about real estate? Appreciate that, Matt. What do you think about me joining this program that's going to teach me how to fund my business? And we're going, and we know we're going to go ask someone who's already in the in the case of who's sitting in misery. But because we want to ensure that we stay there, we'll go ask somebody who's going to pretty much dictate our future to help keep us in misery. As opposed to saying, you know what? Why would I take the advice of somebody who I know is not in the best position to even offer me advice? And so I got to thinking and someone asked me, Will, who do you get advice from when you are going through something? And I say, I use my experiences to, to make my decisions. And then I may dialogue with people, but it's not for the sake of getting advice. It's really just for the sake of dialogue. Because here's the thing, most people get advice from an average of three to five people on one thing. Now, just think about that. People will go and ask three to five people, hey, what do you think about X, Y, Z situation? Which means you're going to get three to five different reference points all based upon their particular uh, uh, experience. So one person could think that everything on the Internet is a scam. So you're going to get that advice. Then you're going to get somebody who invested in something, didn't complete it. So they're going to say, oh, that stuff didn't work. So now you're going to get that person's advice. Then you're going to go ask the third person who just a negative person. And they're going to be like, oh, all that shit sucks. I wouldn't do it. So then you're going to get that person's advice. Then you're going to go to person number four who don't answer the phone. So <laughs> you can't get their advice. Then you go to person number five. And so it's just like we're getting advice from people who not even in the in the space mentally, physically, financially, or emotionally to even offer advice. And then we're basing that off of their reference points, their experiences, and then that's what we're going to use to make a decision about our life. That's why I say people love to sit in misery, as opposed to saying, you know what? This is what I want to do. And if it, and, and I rather go through based off of the decisions and my own experiences. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, well, I found something that doesn't work that I will no longer do. But I've at least gotten the experience that I now can learn from. So when I go into the next situation, I now have a new reference point to make better decisions over here. This is why it cracks me up when people go in and, 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 and sign up for something and then they get mad because it doesn't work to their expectation. As opposed to saying, hmm, let me take what I've learned from here to make things better when I go into my next situation. People out there right now that owe me money. I've never called them out, but what I've done is, is I've used that experience to learn from the next experience. So now I'm like, okay, now I know what to do the next time I go into X, Y, Z situation. Now I'm not telling people to just go out there frivolously and do things. What I'm saying is use your level of experience. And just because I've had a bad experience doesn't mean I'm gonna stop altogether. I often ask people when they say, oh, I don't wanna do that because I tried it before. And I asked them, how many times have you been turned down trying to date somebody who you've liked? They told you no. Did you stop dating? <laughs> I'll tell you, probably no. And so why do we adopt a completely different mentality when we're going for something that we say that's going to change our life or that we want it to change our lives? People love to sit in misery. Stop sitting in misery. Get up off of your ass. We take risk every single day, every single day. We take a risk going to a job that could lay us off every single day, that could shut down at any time. We take a risk with our health, with the foods we eat. <laughs> we, we don't work out. We take a risk with, 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 our, uh, uh, with our significant others, like trying to, 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 Date a, a 
someone who you are attracted to that's that's a risk when you when you're completely vulnerable and you put yourself out there for somebody who could tell you no that's a that's a, a level of risk that you're playing with your emotions and your feelings but we're scared to take a risk in something that's going to that's going to put a lot of the other things in our life in position because let's not act like it's not true. Finances play a significant role in our life. Go try to pay your mortgage or rent with love. <laughs> Go try to pay your, your, your car note being humble. Go try to pay you know, your, your kids tuition being a good person. No, you need money. So why is it that we get we clam up? Or as I say, we play with our potential because we say we're scared. No, we like to sit in misery. Freefundingblueprint.com. So I know yesterday I talked about, you know, offering coaching and group coaching and different things like that. And I'm actually going to start capping it. So right now i have my one-on-one -on -one coaching which i'm going to only work with 10 people i think maybe we have three spots left it's, we literally sold seven in the last couple of days i have three spots left for one-on-one -on -one coaching in my one-on-one -on -one coaching this is where i personally work with you you get access to all my resources all of those and all of those different things secondly i have my group coaching which is where you work with us within a group tonight we have our funding group call which I'm actually going to bring that back. And then we have our VIP coaching. Freefundingblueprint.com to get additional information on that. Now, I want to talk about three things successful people do. You know, just within my studies of traveling the country and getting information from my mentors and, and, and working and investing in different things and working and investing with different people, and you know a lot of you you know which eventually soon i'm gonna you know really share some of the things that i've even been through over the last few months you know a lot of you don't really know you know because i'm fortunate enough to where things were actually still running but i actually went through something extremely traumatic recently and soon i want to be able to share that story and testimony with you guys but with that being said, I want to talk to you guys about three things that successful people do. I actually recommend you guys go get the book by John Maxwell. And so one of the things that they talk about in this book, and I wrote it down and I want to share this with you, the journey is more fun when you know where you're going. The journey is more fun when you know where you are going. And so I often talk to a lot of people who want to get into entrepreneurship and they really don't know where they're going. And I get that and I understand why, but a lot of people don't know where they're going is because they're looking at five different shiny objects. It's very enticing to look at, Hey, I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do that. And we haven't even started being an expert at mastering one thing yet, let alone trying to do four or five. So the journey is more fun when you know where you're going. Number two, Growing to your maximum potential. It's interesting when people go in and, 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 and educate themselves on something, they'll do it for a short period of time and think that they've mastered it. I tell people all the time, even when it comes to funding, everybody, you know, wants to get some capital and fund their business. Well, here's the thing. The funding, funding guidelines have changed just from three months ago. So 90% of the people on the internet teaching people how to fund their business operating off information from five years ago. But the reason they're using information from five years ago, because it sounds cute when you're pitching it to the masses and people are getting into something, they, getting into things and they don't even know what they've invested in. And then they come over to us and they're like, oh, well, so-and-so, uh, uh scammed me because they didn't sell me what i thought i was getting no did you read it did you actually read and a lot of times people have uh the information laid out you just had an unrealistic expectation 
So you can't blame it on everybody else. You can't blame it on everybody else. So I don't know how to wave. <laughs> That's all right, fam. Oakland Nation, what up? So grow to your maximum potential. I'm always constantly reinvesting into myself. Always. Shout out to my, my, my coach, my advisor, Brett Holcomb. You know, even with the uh, uh, amount of success that I've created up until this point, I still bring on advisors to continue to, to direct me and coach me. Because that's the only way that I can become a better CEO. Like, I don't know about a lot of y'all CEOs or potential CEOs. Like, it's almost like it's cool to say we grind it. And I'm fine with that. But I want to grind outside my business. I don't want to be working in it forever. Cindy, what's going on, fam? Knowledge, what up? And so that's the thing that I really uh, am investing in and in learning how to put uh, policies and procedures in place for the businesses to operate outside or in spite of me. So this way I can go out there and invest in other ventures that's making me $20,000 a month on autopilot. I have a venture over here making me $5,000 a month on autopilot. I may have a venture over here that's a startup that's making me $2,000 a month on autopilot. I don't have to always hit a home run. If I can have 10 things hitting, one going to first base, one doing going to third base, I may have one that hits home runs every single time. But that's why you have the multiple streams of income and revenue. But you can't do any of those things if you don't know how to run an, uh, if you don't know how to run a business. A lot of us are just great cooks. A lot of us are just great whatever. But do you know how to run a business? But until you grow into your maximum potential, that will never happen. And no, it's not going to come overnight. It's not. If y'all know how often I'm sitting up. And, and restructuring things and doing this and doing that because you have to grow with the times. You have to. Lastly, sowing seeds that will benefit others. Sowing seeds that will benefit others. Yes, multiple streams, not multiple jobs. I felt that one. <laughs> yeah. Now, I believe you do got to do what you got to do. If you got to work two jobs, you got to do that. But I will also say it's too much information and too many resources out here for us to still be broke. I'm sorry. Too much. I, I'll give you an example. I've had clients who come to me and say, hey, I don't have any money to invest into your program. And I say, OK, well, tell me a little bit about your, you know, your situation. We start talking and we get to dig and they tell me, oh, they have two vehicles. Well, go rent one of your cars. And if you uh aren't if you're not if you don't drive often rent both of your cars on the days that you don't need them well i don't know because what if they tear it up and do this and do that you could potentially tear your car up i'd rather rent it potentially trying to make some money to change my situation because guess what if i rent my vehicles the program has insurance that's going to cover the cost of the car getting torn up again we love to sit in misery do we really want to change our circumstances? Are we playing with our maximum potential? Sow seeds that will benefit others. I've been sowing seeds for a long time on this credit game. I've been sowing seeds a long time on this funding space. People didn't even know what the term creative financing meant six years ago. Now everybody do funding. Everybody. I was at the gas station. This man gave me his business card, said, hey, I can help you fund your business. <laughs> I was like, bro, you probably are outsourcing to my company, so I'm good. Sow seeds that will benefit others. Do you know where you're going on your journey? Are you growing to your maximum potential? Are you sowing seeds that will benefit others? Are you sowing seeds to benefit others, or are you just trying to get a quick bag? And if you are, that's cool. But as my brother Brian say, bags is cute. I'm trying to get the bank. Bags are cute. I'm trying to get the bank. A lot of people say, like I show people, this is my bank. 
and it has about 40 sleeves with th with three slots each in here. And then I just bought another one because I got another couple companies that I got to start funding. Just bought another one. So as I wrap up, this is what I'm going to share with y'all. When y'all going to stop playing with y'all potential? When are you going to stop playing with your potential? Let me share another thing with y'all. Stop wanting everything for free. I tell people, they like, oh, man, I just want to pick your brain. Go to my YouTube channel for that. I've been in this a long time. Go to my YouTube channel for that. I come on here. I get on live. It's, it's even things that I share with coaching clients that I share with you guys. Now, I don't go into the whole strategy piece. Thinking I just want to make 10 G's a week. You got to grind. You got to work. You got to work. But let me tell you, it's so gratifying. It's so rewarding. It's so rewarding. Trust me, it feels good when you wake up knowing you have a guaranteed X amount of dollars coming through because of the work you've put in to build up those platforms, to build out those courses. It feels good to know when you have revenue coming in from multiple streams and you don't even have to be there. It feels good to know that people want to license your content to where you're getting a guaranteed uh, residual check every single month. I tell people, the book. If you want to get a guaranteed residual check every month, write a book. I think every entrepreneur should have a book. Here's why. One, because it gives you instant credibility. And it's guaranteed residual income every single month. Now, you're going to have to put a little sauce behind it with your marketing and promotion. Hey, hey, how you doing, queen? But you got to work hard anyway. I'd rather work hard on my brand. <laughs> then go give somebody else my blood, sweat, and tears with no potential residual income or revenue from it. When I left corporate America, my check stopped coming. I can go move to Puerto Rico. I can go move to Thailand. I can go move to uh, to Colombia right now, and my businesses will still th uh, flourish. That's the point you want to get to. But you can't get to that point. Coach Amber, how you doing? You can't get to that point if you're not growing to your maximum potential. Some of us focus our potential on knowing the stats on every athlete out there. Most of us focus on our maximum potential knowing every single song and every single lyric that, that your favorite singer done dropped. I've heard people damn near about to get in a fight because this person know more about this person's stats. And neither one of them get a check from either person on the team. But they can't tell you what their gross and net revenue was from their business last year. Are you growing to your full potential? Are you growing to your full potential? Freefundingblueprint.com. Reach out. My team is in the office today. Let's run this up. Because time is ticking, y'all. It's not going to be like this forever. And with the uh, influx of opportunity that's about to come, and I'm going to keep using this terminology. What's up, son? Okay. With the potential of, of opportunity that's coming this way, and like I mentioned, I'm going to keep using this terminology, we want to focus on the triangle offense of creating wealth, starting with credit, and I like to doodle, y'all. I don't know about y'all. Credit, funding, and assets. Just had a client get some capital. Let me share this testimony with y'all. Had a client out of Cleveland, did one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, and he said, Will, I, I want to generate other passive income. So I'm going home, but not on living how I want in earth. He said, Will, I want to generate some more passive income. 
and I want to get some capital to invest in XYZ industry. So I said, okay. So we helped him get some capital. We helped him get about 130 in some capital. Hit me back. He said, Will, this was the easiest and, and most simplest investment I ever made in my life, period. I did what you told me to do. It took me a little bit of time, but it happened. He was able to take that capital, invest in XYZ business. So now he purchased cash flow. See, that's the thing I'm trying to show people is that I use my bank to purchase cash flow. I'm from Cleveland. That's where I met you. Appreciate that purple heart, Mark. I use my bank to purchase cash flow. He purchased some cash flow. So he said, Will, I want to coach with you again so I can get some more capital and go purchase some more cash flow. So he renewed his coaching. We helped him get another 50000 last night. And now he's like, Will, I I'm looking for more opportunities. But in the meantime, can I get some more funding? I'm like, absolutely. So we're putting another play together. So when the next opportunity for an asset comes along, he can go and purchase more cash flow. But see, this is what's starting to happen. A lot of us are just getting funding just so we can post it on the internet so we can get the oohs and ahs. And we're not even really legitimately trying to run businesses. And you want to know how I know? Because we're trying to start businesses that we have no idea about startup costs. We have no idea how to run them. We have no idea about structure. We have no idea about accounting. We have no idea about anything. We just heard somebody post a thing on the internet. We clicked on their sponsor ad. So we think we can make money just like them, not knowing they've probably been in the game five, six, 12, 13 years of experience. So we buy into it with no experience, thinking we can get to where they are in 30 days. And we think we don't need any form of education in business or in that particular space. We plan with our maximum potential. Freefundingblueprint.com. Make sure y'all go reach out, give you the blueprint to help you get to the next level. No, you're not going to get everything to become a millionaire off that call. Basically, it's a game plan call. It's really an assessment call. It's an assessment call. The call is to assess if you are even on path to getting to where you say you want to go to. It's an assessment call. It's an evaluation call. It's a screening call. It's, a, and it's an assessment call. 15-minute free funding blueprint.com. I appreciate y'all, and I will see y'all on the other side. Peace.